Alright, so did you ever play Malifaux before? Do you know the rules? Only once, and it was a long time ago. Yeah, and I didn't play Malifaux at all. So Puppet Wars is really basic. It's all based around the board. And let me actually just go through the... Okay, so the whole... So I'm assuming these are all cards for each one of these guys. They're the stack cards, right. Is this going to be my force? That's your... I don't that, really care. That's your, or you can have this army. They're, they're, this is the way the game came balanced. So, so let's just go through one of the cards. So just pick somebody. Okay, so the, the animation requirement is the number on the top. So the way the game starts is you and I each have a workbench, and every turn, or every animation round, we can try to bring a puppet into the game. Okay. And we do that with our cards. So your cards are your four suits plus two jokers. The red one is like instant success, I'll explain that later, and the black one's like instant failure. Okay. Um, but this animation is an eight. So if you... You need an eight card or higher, higher to, to, bring to, to bring them in. Um, Sometimes they'll have suits as well, like that one's a seven of, I think that's a mask. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a seven and a mask. Now that could be on one card, or you could have a seven or greater on one card, and an eight of a mask on another card. Okay. To bring that person in. Uh, the defense is the, the number with the thimble. That's what it takes to hit them. So if it's just a number, it needs to be that number of higher. Or if it's a number in a suit, it needs to be that number in suit. The suit being indicated. Yeah, this indicated there. Yeah, that little symbol. Yeah. So sometimes, obviously, a lower number, but with a suit, is infinitely better defense than just like a ten or something. Right, right, right. Um, combat. Combat is the number of how many cards you can draw to try to attack somebody with that unit. Yeah, with that model. So it's only one attack, but the more cards you can draw, the better chance you have of beating their defense and hitting them. Okay. Uh, and then upgrade limit. That almost never comes into play, so when your puppets die, you flip them over, they have this upgrade. When you get near a workbench, you can you can spend their action to try to put the thing on. This is how many, the upgrade limit is how many things they can have attached to them. Uh -huh. So as your army dies, you can put shit like swords and guns and shit on your puppets, and they become even more powerful. Uh, then there's the bottom section. So each puppet, when it activates, has two moves and an action. Uh, the two that they can be done in any sequence, so you can attack, move, move, at move, attack, move, however you want to do it. Um, move, attack, move, and you have two moves and an attack, and an attack, and you can do them in any kind of sequence you want. Okay. So a lot of flexibility there. Uh, you also have on your action. There's a few actions you can take. Uh, you can just sprint, and that'll just be a third move. You can attack, which is in base to base adjacent, uh, like hand to hand. Um, okay. Some puppets have guns, and they'll say like range two, so it's two, you know, spaces that they can shoot. Uh, and there's a few other actions you can take. Uh, the game is based around either killing the puppet master. Once the puppet master dies, the game's over, kind of like chess. I think I'm missing a model. I think you're missing a model. Uh, Seamus. Oh, he's right here. He's your puppet master. Oh, okay. That's why he's out on the board. So the goal is to either oh, kill. Is he the... supposed to be? Yeah. To begin? Okay. He's supposed. To... You're supposed to either kill the other puppet master. <coughs> Or take all the workbenches over because once all the workbenches are gone, your puppets can't come in and they can't do anything. So what are workbenches? The clear ones or the, the clear ones are on our unclaimed ones. Okay. Red is yours, green is mine. If at any time you don't have any workbenches left, you lose. Or at any time once your puppet master dies, you lose. Okay. That's the And this is just impassable, impassable terrain. terrain. Okay. Right. So your puppets can do a few things on their action. They can sprint, which is just they can run, which is just make one more movement. They can attack. They can do a, a mine, meaning if they are, if they're on the workbench, they can go mine and make it their team's workbench. Oh, okay. Uh, that's helpful. They can scrounge, which is if they're adjacent to a workbench and no one's standing on it, that's that's theirs. They can take the upgrade parts from your dead puppets. You're very unlikely to do it, but you can do it. Um, how, so when you say move, is it one square? It's one square in okay. any direction. Okay. No, you can't step over people. You can't step through adjacent terrain. You can step on enemy workbenches. So if this was an enemy workbench, I could step on and keep going if I wanted to, but I'd probably just take it. Is there Now, if I'm on your workbench, can I say mine and turn it into mine? Yes. Okay. I think, or maybe, <coughs> I think it goes to a neutral workbench. So you got to mine mine twice or whatever? I'm not certain on that. So for this game, we'll just say you just flip it completely. It okay. maybe you have to do it twice. But those are the, the actions your guys can do. Basically, they're either going to attack, they're going to mine, or they're going to run. Those are the three big things. If you start losing puppets and you want to scrounge, we'll talk about it and look at the rules to make sure exactly how to do that. I, I'm cool. just going to say yeah. not for this turn. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think it's really much of a word. Basic game! Yep. Uh, now, why do some of the puppets have... 
So that's two, or those, are, those are wounds. Hit points. We gotta wipe those okay. off. So those are your wounds. Those are how many rips you take. So when you suffer an un, an un that's clever. You take a rip, and once you're out of rips, you poof. Right. Um, so the number of rips are indicated at the bottom there. Uh, once you activate a puppet, so the activation is a bringing them on the board is an activation, and also when they're already on the board, once you play them, they become exhausted, meaning you can't use them anymore. But you can force your puppet to keep doing something else. But they have, take a wound. But they take a rip. Right. And you can never, you can, if you only have one rip left, you can't force them because they'll just die. Right. Um, so that's, that's not allowed. Okay. How many cards do you start off with? You get five in your hand. And um, let me see that. There's abilities down here. So the abilities can be, can be done if you read them and pay the cost. Um, and there's also actions that can be taken. So actions are, instead of, in, in their basic action, instead of just doing one of those three things, they can do one of those things if they pay the cost. And if you want to do it, we'll discuss how it's done because I haven't played every puppet I don't know yet. Okay. Um, but most of the time, what I've found when I play with my wife, it, it's hard to not be good at this game. It's pretty basic. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the times you're just attacking and stuff because when you look at the cost to do some really complex stuff, it's it's it's, it's not worth it. it. It doesn't initially appear worth it in my basic <coughs> understanding of how the game works. Now, if I were to put a, down a card that's a uh, an eight, uh -huh. could I bring on both of these? No, just one. Okay. And also, once they're on the board to activate them again to use them again, you have to have another card that is an eight or greater. So it's not just the cost to come in. Once they're oh. in, you also need to keep having those cards. When you run out of cards in your deck, you just shuffle. Uh, for Seamus, he ignores the cost of the crow to activate his guys. That's his, one of his special things. So any of your guys that are green with crows, you don't need a five of crows, you just need a five. Nice. For mine, it's rams. So it kind of start, it's kind of like almost like magic, right? You build a black deck or a green, or a green deck. Right, right, right. Kind of the same thing. So a lot of your puppets you're going to notice, except for one or two, are going to need just the number to activate. You should have a sidekick in there, and it should be underneath the name. Sidekicks are like... Your most powerful pawns are kind of just basic grunts. Where, where do I see this? So oh, this okay. is like pawn. This is a pawn. This is a sidekick. Sidekicks side have more powerful kind of abilities. Okay. And some of them are, are really nasty. Like Betty Noir has some ability. Like if she attacks an exhausted puppet and she successfully hits, she can do something else to like just basically kill it immediately. Okay. They have those kinds of uh, abilities. So how do you defend against attack? So when I say I'm going to <coughs> attack you. You have your base defense, and you can choose to dodge. Oh, that sounds like a pity. So what you do is, is you play a card, you flip one card over, you can either use that, or if you don't like it, you can always replace it from your hand. So then your defense is replaced by the suit and the number of that card. Oh, nice. So most of the time it pays, it pays to dodge, unless your defense is really good. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just confirm the dodge rule, because I'm not sure. A dodge might just be from your hand, so you only get five cards in your hand. Yeah. Uh, plus one for every workbench you have. So it's four plus your one workbench is five. The more workbenches you have, the more cards you have. Those five cards, once they're out, you don't get any new cards until we've gone through five animation rounds. Oh, wow. Then all the exhausted tokens come off, everything resets. So dodging may not be a good idea if you're going to use up all your cards and you have a powerful card that you want to use to like, attack next turn, for instance. Gotcha. So let me just look up dodge. Now, if there's no, if there's no point you cost play from your hand. associated with an action... Or I guess if you have abilities, are they just Abilities just passive? you can do. Okay. So like one of my abilities here is Sprint. can make one additional move during its activation. So it can move three times and attack. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and you start and... Okay. So <coughs> actually, we each get those, those five cards. I have my five. Okay. And then to start the first animation round, and we should be marking this... Um, we flip a card from our top hand, and we look at it. Both of us do? Yes. Okay. Because this is going to determine, it changes every round, sometimes what your animation is. So, you look at your card. So, your card has a number and a symbol for its suit value. This will be your, <laughs> the picture on it, or just the number? I think this is the black joker. Where no, I'm... that's a two, that's an ace. That'll be an ace. Oh, okay. So, an ace, let me, actually, that should be something we should go through. Just the rules on those few cards real quick. So, what'll happen is we'll both flip a card. Okay. My number is, the lower number goes first, and then the... But the lower your number, the weaker the puppet you're going to be able to get out because the more powerful puppets are higher numbers. Right. So what you have to do is decide, this number's no good for me, so I'd have to replace it. But if I got like a six, I'm limited to what I can activate. Mm -hmm. So I have to determine, do I want to go first or second this round? How important is it for me to bring in or activate a more powerful what, puppet? Is an ace a high card or a low card? An ace is worth, I think, one or eleven, and then you instantly get to flip a second card. Um, let me just look real quick. 
Aces are pretty much aces. <coughs> so an ace... I remembered this two weeks ago, but I don't remember. I just thought it was funny where you're like, it'll have a number in the symbol. I'm like, uh, I don't. <laughs> it does not have that. Alright. Aces. An ace has a numerical value of one and double its suit value. So that would be a one of crows, crows. It would be a dual crows. Which is important when you, you're putting it on, like, defense. Because now your defense is a crows, crow. Meaning I need two crows plus a, a one, basically. When an ace is flipped or played, you may flip an additional card and replace the numerical value of the one with the numerical value of the newly flipped card while keeping the suit of the original ace. Okay, so I flip another card? You flip another card. Thirteen. So now it's a thirteen of crows, crows. If, if that was your defense, you'd be like fucking stoked. Yeah. Because it's, like, it's almost impossible to hit. <coughs> if an additional ace is flipped, do not flip again. You flip the, the ace of crows, we'll say in this instance, and an additional card. The additional card is a, a, a 13 of, I'm translating this, of whatever that is, rams. The value of your total flip is now a 13 uh, crows crows. Okay. Because of the additional card only replaces the ace's numerical value. Now there's the two special cards, the red joker. The red joker has a numerical value of 14. So it's above even this card. Okay. When it's flipped or played, the player chooses a suit. It's worth double the suit of the the suit value of the chosen suit. So if you flip your, your red joker, it can be a, it's a 14 of whatever suit you want. So a 14 crows, crows, two crows. Technically the most powerful. Um, the black joker. When the black joker is flipped when it, while attempting to meet an action value, it automatically fails. So that's the whole thing. So in this instance, that would be... Would I show you this right away? Or? No, you, you would hold it. You would wait, I would wait, I'd be like, okay. So do you want that? Because you can bring in whatever you want. Yeah, but with I'm that, right. you're, you're definitely going to go, go second. second. Right. right. Now, with my three, I wouldn't keep this. So when you discard, you discard face up okay. over there. And now I have to play something from my hand. Okay. So I'm going to play this. Is this what I want to play? Yeah, I'll just play this way. So I'm going to play that. So once we both decide what we want, we both flip over. Mm -hmm. You see what you... I got a seven. So now I can activate anything that's a seven, um, which honestly isn't too, too much. But I got some stuff here. Oh, okay. I'm going to activate my judge. So my judge is going to come in. When he comes in, he can come in on any workbench I own. Right now, I only own one workbench. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to come in on this. <clears throat> only the, If the puppet master is standing on your workbench, they can come in next to it. Anywhere next to it. Okay. If another puppet besides your master is standing on it, the workbench is like canceled out. It can't be used. Gotcha. Um, so he's going to come in. He's going to come in here. And he gets two moves and an action. And he's my sidekick. Okay. So, this counts as one move. If he starts on the workbench, he has two moves. If you don't, this is counts as one. Okay. So, he gets one additional move. So, he's going to go uh, one to there. And then his action is just going to be to run. So, he's going to run one more space. Now, I mark him as exhausted. I have a bunch of exhausted tokens over here. And now we know he's exhausted. Okay. And that's my animation round. Now, it's your animation round. You can activate basically whatever you want, barring like this, because you don't have the suit. Right. Okay. Um, why don't I go ahead and just, I know it's expensive, but I'm going to go ahead and bring him on. Okay. And I think he has a range two shot, which means he can shoot people like here going out for his attack. So on his action, if you look at his yeah, ability, yeah, it should be like a pop gun kind of thing. Okay. So he gets one more move in an action. Oh, this gets discarded. Uh, here I'm gonna have him run. Okay, that's fine. And that's your animation. And that's an animation round. We do five of those, and then everything resets. Okay. And do you have an exhaust token? Yep. Okay. We'll just put these here. Those then get discarded. Okay. Face up, I guess. Yep. And then we flip again from the top. We determine if that's what we want. I'll keep that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep this as well. Okay. All right. Mine's an eight. Mine's a two. Okay, can you, okay, you can activate something with it too, okay. And I'll just have her run. Okay. With my eight. Uh, da -da -da. <coughs> I'll bring in my Ronin. My Ronin's going to come in here, that's one move. She has sprint, so she's going to go two, three. But because she has sprint, she can't then do her extra action to also run. Okay. Um, so she's then just going to be tapped out. She's, she's done. She's exhausted. Okay. It, it's pissing me off that I'm actually getting high cards right now. Yeah, because then you're gonna have to cycle through your deck later. Yeah. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Okay. I guess so. Twelve. All right. 
So what I'm going to do is, even though he's exhausted, the judge, I'm going to put a rip on him so I can run him again. Use him again. Okay. And he's going to go one, two, and his action is going to be to attack this guy. Okay. Uh, his action has a pins and needles, so I need to pay a ram and a mask. This goes away now. So here's my mask, and here's my ram to do this. His range itself, so it's on himself. It says make two attacks against one target puppet in range two. So he'll attack him once, and then he'll attack him again, because normally they can only attack once. Okay, um, now... You can elect to dodge if you want. So that requires playing the card from your hand, and that will replace his defense and stuff. Or you can just stick with whatever you have. He gets to flip three cards for each attack. Okay, well, he's going to dodge. Okay, yeah, i got to see what that is, though. Because I'm going to flip from my hand, and that's going to be what... So you flip that over, that's going to replace his defense, whatever it is. So now his defense is 11 of crows. Yep. So now I get three cards, and we'll see if I get anywhere near that. So I got a 10 of crows, and I got two fucking aces in this hand, but they're not the, the right one. And I don't have a crow in my hand, so his first attack totally fails. And then he gets to attack again. And that's going to be a, a fail as well. So he totally whiffed. Okay. If I had something in my hand, I could play to try to put down what I need, but I don't have anything what I need. Right. So that's it. So that was a good call to go ahead and defend. Yeah, absolutely. Because my goal there was he has two <coughs> wounds, yeah. two quick kills, and I pop him off the board. Right. So that's, that's my go then. Okay. So now I have this 12. Um... Just so you know, she kind of sucks. I have one like that too. She has no attack value. Mm -hmm. She has her only her... her it's healing, right? Her, her, I think she stabs opponents with a needle, and then they don't have any... Like, the combat is minus three. Yeah, they don't have any ability to attack anybody. Like a sedative or some shit. I have like a cherub that does, this, does something that has no attack either. But what I want to do for this is buy the additional puppets, so that way you can like customize your army more, because this is just what came in the box. Okay, so I'm going to bring in Betty Noir. Okay. She's going to move up to your judge. I'll probably punch him in the face. And, and we'll... yeah. Okay. Because, well, she's going to use an action that says, make an attack against an exhausted puppet. If successful, tear apart that puppet. Right. Does it have a cost? Um, Does it have, like, any symbols or numbers next to it? It says, discard a crow card, I guess. Right, so well, if you have, four plus. So I have to. You have to have a crow card in your hand to do it, and then discard it, and that'll be your action then. Now, that is a crow, right? Right. Okay, so. Oh, now you can do that action. How many attacks does she get? What's her combat? Combat four. Oh, I forgot how fucking nasty she is. I usually play that side. Um, <coughs> his defense is only a ten, so he's probably gonna die. We'll make it that because that's the only card in my hand. So it's a nine of rams. So on whatever's in your hand, you need to get a ram and a nine, either together or equal, and then you can use cards from your hand to try to make it happen. Is that a ram? That is the black joker, so that's an, that's an instant fail. Okay. Actually, you know what? No, that is the red joker, so you succeed. Okay. The black joker will have a guy all in black with a sword. <coughs> okay, so he succeeds, and you rip apart this puppet. So when this puppet dies, he's totally dead. The token goes away. And then he gets flipped over. So now I have this upgrade ability, and it goes to my workbench, and then I can scrounge to try to put it on my puppets. Gotcha. Um, so that's animation round four, then. I have nothing in my hand. That's pretty bad. Okay, obviously i got to stick with that. That card. All right, I got an eight. I have a six. Okay, so you see you. Um, boop, 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 boop. And... Judge oh, <laughs> so bad. That was really too aggressive for me. Because I tried to kill a pawn with a sidekick, and that's probably a bad idea. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put her on the board there. The bell? Yeah. Yeah. And... She gets a move in an action. I don't know what to do with her. Just move her twice. Move her, like, uh, two more times, then. Just run. Use your, use your last move and then use your run ability. Yep. Okay. The initial turn a puppet comes out, usually, unless you have good place workbenches strategically, there's not a whole lot they do. Right. Um, with my eight, I gotta get somebody on the board. 
not that piece of shit. Can't do that one, that one. Can't do that one, so it's either one of these two shots. Do you get to ignore a, an icon as well? Does Lady Justice ignore, like, the ram or something? Yes. She ignores the ram. These are... They're, they're, but this is a ram anyway. These characters are pulled directly from... From the Alpha. Yeah, they're the puppet versions of them. Um... I've always been kind of intimidated by Malifaux just because it's cards. But if it's like this, or if it's if, if it has it's any It's weird, though, because some of these characters don't fall on the same army list. And she's going to run. Well, technically, you can use whatever puppets you want um, in any army list. This is just the recommended. So right. you say how many puppets you want in your toy box, and that determines your size, <coughs> so right. then you have to bring a puppet master. So it does over. become a lot like Magic the Gathering, where you're effectively creating your Right, so you have puppet. to bring a puppet master, and then for every four puppets you bring, you can bring a sidekick. So in this game, there's eight puppets, there's two sidekicks, and six pawns. Gotcha. So you can play a game, and it goes up to four players. You can play two, three, or four people on this board. Okay. So I can imagine four people would just be, like, Brutal. ridiculous. 